reason, and I believe things happen with such a divine purpose and a divine appointment. Amen? Amen. So, welcome everyone. My name is Jed. I think everybody, hopefully everybody knows me, but it's fine. Well, anyway, um, hallelujah. There's something about today that I believe there's going to be a breakthrough. I'm not saying this for you guys, but I'm saying it also for me. I think God has something in store for everyone. Hold on your seats and wait for God's word. I know you have such time and we respect all of your time, but I think the Lord wants to say something specifically just for you today. Amen. We've been talking about trustful. And I think um, Pastor Tim have showed the meaning of trustful. Oops, is that the trustful you're talking about? Oh, it's a trust fail. <laughs> well, anyway, if I'm going to ask you today, what have you learned about for the past two weeks so, about trustful? Can anyone say something? Okay, know which way you're going. That's good. Let go and let God. Amen. That's good. Be patient. Yeah, precisely. Anyone else? He'll catch you. Yes. Not, not this way, right? No, no, no. <laughs> and, I, and I love the verse that Pastor Tim has uh, shared regarding about Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 to 6, right? You just trust God with all of your heart. And sometimes, and sometimes it's not even sometimes, it's like all the time you try harder to understand what you're going through, but it's Still, you cannot understand what you're going through. But you know that you know that God is with you. And He doesn't want you to lean on your own understanding. That's why it's trustful. And one thing I've learned is that as a church, as a body of believer, it's not just one person that will catch you. Look at your left and your right. These are the people that will catch you. Amen. Yeah. Because we are the church. I'm saying that with all of my heart. Because I believe in the church. Because we are the church. We're here not because of, the, because of these four walls. We're here because... We're like-minded people. We're here because we're broken inside and we see everybody's, you know, pieces and we have a story to tell. Not to gossip, but for us to see the reflection of God through other people that we see inside this room. That we will come to a point where you can say, God, I need, I need to do something. If they can, I can too. If they're struggling, I'm also struggling. If I'm going through this process, then I'm as well going through this process. We always hear that we should trust the process, but actually it's not just trusting the process, but it's trusting the person, the very God who's allowed you to go through that process. It's not enough for us to just trust the process. We need to completely trust God. And I say this, I told Pastor Tim, it's like kind of a continuation of his trust fall. But we're going to talk about something, probably a deeper understanding about trust fall. Let's talk about our faith. Sometimes when we talk about trust, sometimes we need proof in order for us to trust 
someone. Sometimes we need to experience someone's ability. We need to know someone's, you know, someone's life in order for us to gain or for us to trust that person and for that person to trust us. You know, trust is actually part of faith. But sometimes through our struggles in life and through our what-ifs in lives, we need to be deeper than just trust. That if there's no any further proof, but we know that we know with such evidence God exists and God is with you, then that's faith. And we need to come to a point where in faith, a relentless faith. Now let's go through the word of God. But before that, let's pray. God, we thank you so much for this time. Give you the honor, we give you the praise. Lord, let every word just pierce in our hearts, Father. Because these are your words. And I am your instrument. And Lord, we need you, God. Because we trust you. And then we know who you are. And con please continue to reveal who you are in our lives. And this is our prayer. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let's look on Matthew chapter 15, verse 21 to 28. I always love this version, Amplified. Because I love my, I love my wife. <laughs> Sorry for that. <laughs> Amplified version, right? It goes a long way. It gives you a better understanding, right? When you communicate, sometimes you just need to hear more words, you know, to further understand what's going on. Okay, so chapter 15, verse 21 to 28. But before we read on this, actually it was when Pastor Tim is asking me, so what's going to be your word? What's going to be next? And then the last preaching that he shared is regarding the last picture that he showed is about, you know, the, the, the ocean, the, the sea we're in. You know, it, it gives a picture of me saying, Peter, you know, trusting God to walk on water, but he suddenly, you know, he forgot to refocus his lens or adjust his lens. Instead of looking at God, he was looking at his surroundings. You know, sometimes in our walk in life, sometimes the more we get closer to God, the more that we see the surroundings instead of God because we forgot to refocus our lenses. Right? And I was looking at that, so... I was looking at the chapters after that. I'm trying to find something about Peter, but I couldn't find something about Peter after that. Seems like after that chapter, Peter have not yet learned his lessons. That's right. Peter have not yet learned his lessons. And in chapter 15 of Matthew, it actually started in Jerusalem. When Jesus went to Jerusalem, you know, after that incident, when Jesus walked in waters, they go, they push forward, they go from different cities to another, and they went to Jerusalem. And now when they probably, you know, you know, probably Jerusalem is kind of like a small town. Everybody knows who's going to come in. And then the Pharisees, you know, along with the scribes, along with the people that are, knows about the law, they ask the Pharisees, come with me. Jesus is coming here at Jerusalem. Let's test him. Let's prove him that he's wrong. You know? And then, when they saw Jesus and his disciples, I'm just going to try to paraphrase, paraphrase everything. When they saw uh, Jesus, actually before they saw Jesus, probably they have set a plan. Come on, let's set a plan. How can we pin down Jesus? You know? Oh, let's, let's start with the law. You know, what are the law? What do you think about Jesus? You know, what are the things that usually he doesn't mind about? 
And then probably what they were thinking, oh, probably when, they, when every time they have gatherings, when they do fellowship, when they eat together. He said, probably that's, that's a good idea. And they, they saw Jesus and he said, Jesus, you know, why do you allow your disciples to break the traditions? Don't you know when you eat, you should wash your hands first? And probably they thought that, pin down. You're breaking the traditions, Jesus. And Jesus said, come on, you're much worse than me. You're not just breaking the traditions, you're breaking the Mosaic law. Because in the book of law, you said, honor thy father and mother. And who doesn't honor their mother and father, you know, are actually should be put to death. Why you keep on saying that, you know, that it's okay for your people to bring their gifts at the altar and it's fine with them not to take care, not to take care of their parents. That is against the Mosaic law. And now you're telling me that I don't teach my disciples not to clean their hands before they eat? The poet extremely peace. And he pulled out the crowd and said, you know, what is much worse? Things that comes in in our mouth or the things that comes out from our mouth? And his disciples were so worried. He said, Jesus, come on, you're offending the Pharisees and the scribes. Can we just, you know, lay low? You know, you're offending them. And then I think it's not Peter, because Peter was just, you know, he had too much about Jesus. <laughs> he had too much from Jesus, you know, from, you know, drowning from that water. And then probably Peter was there, come on, tell Jesus about, you know, you should stop. And then he just drew the crowd and said, you know what, you know, what, what really makes us clean? What really makes us, you know, dirty? And then after that, he said, you know, these people are blind guides. Blind, leading the blind will, no go, will not go any further. And then here comes Peter. Now it's my time. Jesus, what's the meaning of that parable? And then Jesus said, Where's your brain, Peter? <laughs> Where's your brain, Peter? Have you left it somewhere? Because Peter was instantly just said, again, what's the meaning of that parable? Blind eating the blind. And then after this, after this incident, after to Jerusalem, you know, a place where God, a place of his people, a place where and God called, you know, called them as their children, 193 kilometers away, Jesus and his disciples travel going to, um, going to Tyre and Sidon. From Jerusalem going to Tyre and Sidon. It's like from Melville going to the borders of Manitoba. That's how far it is. 193 kilometers away. You know, from, from the children of God to the pagan worshippers to the cities of Phoenicia, Tyre and Sidon is a place wherein highly populated, well known for its riches and glory because it's, they're actually in the eastern part of Mediterranean Sea, well known for building ships and navigations. You know, they're actually two of the most powerful cities of Phoenicia and they're well known for worshiping Baal and Ashtoreth. People there are pagans, but yet God went there. If the people of God will not listen to him, might as well go to the people that doesn't believe God exists. And you know what happens? Let's read on this. After leaving there, leaving Jerusalem, we drew to the district of Tyre and Sidon, and a Canaanite woman 
from the district came out and began to cry out urgently, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David, Messiah. My daughter is cruelly possessed by a demon. But he did not say a word in answer to her. And his disciples came and asked him repeatedly, Send her away because she keeps shouting out after us. He answered, I was commissioned by God and sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Verse 25, But she came and began to kneel down before him, saying, Lord, help me. And he replied, It is not good or appropriate fair to take the children's bread and throw it to the pet, of, to the pet dogs. Verse 27, she said, Yes, Lord, but even the pet dogs eat the crumb that fall from their young master's table. Verse 28, Then Jesus answered her, Woman, your faith, your person, your personal trust and confidence in my power is great. It will be done for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed from that moment. Let's go back. You know, when this woman saw Jesus, she didn't, she didn't cry out loud like, Jesus, I'm here. Jesus. He cried out, you know, from, from the bottom of his belly. He said, Jesus, son of David. Sorry, sorry. He <laughs> said, Jesus. He was, she was pleading. She was begging for God. And what did Jesus did, do? She actually put her to a test. And he replied, Jesus replied, it is not good, appropriate, fair, or fair to the children's bread and throw it to the pet dogs. Was she offended? No. She persisted. She even knelt down before the Lord. And she even said, what did she say? Yes, Lord, but even the pet dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their young master's table. During those days, they treat the pagan people as dogs. And they treat the Israelites, the chosen people, the children of God. And there's something about this passage, this verse, that talks about the faith. That this passage can act actually is directly to us. We're not Jewish people. Like this Canaanite woman. There's three things that I've learned from this. First, the woman is desperate. The woman have actually showed such faith. But the faith that she never realized she has all started from a desperation. She was so desperate. She was so desperate to see Jesus to the point that she was crying out over the top of her lungs and shouting, Son of David! And she was pleading. She might probably crawling and begging God, Jesus, to heal her daughter that was demon-possessed. She was so desperate to the point that it's not about me, Jesus. How desperate are we? Are we already in our lowest of low? Have we come to a point wherein enough is enough? I don't care what other people might say or think of me. Have we cried out to God in desperation? Have we come to a point of extreme urgency with such intensity because of a great need or a desire? Are we desperate for God? Next, 
this woman was so persistent to the point that Jesus thrown, thrown at her such words that might offend her. But she doesn't care. She persisted. In verse 23, it says here, but he did not say a word in answer to her. Have we come to a point wherein we have prayed for something that we strongly need and desire, but yet God, we feel like yet God is not responding to us? That it seems like God is in complete silence. And he even, and after this, after not saying any words, his disciples came and asked him repeatedly, send her away, God. Send her away, Jesus, because she keeps shouting out after us. Have we ever come to a point wherein people looks at us and people is trying to point their finger to us and testing our faith? Are we persistent enough to let go of those people around us and don't mind what they say, but you know that you know deep inside in your heart, God, it's you whom I need. And in verse 24, he answered this. Jesus said, I was commissioned by God and sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But then again, she persisted, but she came and began to kneel down before him saying, Lord, help me. And verse 26, and he replied, it is not good to take the children's bread and throw it to the pet dogs. But even so, she said, but even the pet dogs, even us, the lowly of lows, can eat the crumbs. Lord, just give us a glimpse of your grace, just an ounce of your power. I'll take it, Lord. That's what she's trying to do. Lord, just give me just an ounce, just a small portion. I'll take it. And I don't care what everybody will tell about me. Because it's you that I need, Lord. It's you that I want. It's your power, your anointing. I'll take it, Lord. No matter how lowly people think of who am I. No matter where I am standing right now. Just crumbs, God just crumbs it's fine with me and with that faith you know what God listens and hears the words of his children who cries out before him not because of that person, not because of the infilling in themselves, but he hears his children who are selfless. At first, you know, with our journey of life and faith, at first we might think, you know, we need this, we need that. We're going such hard times. You know what? Let's just push forward. Be desperate. Look for God. Read His Word. Be persistent. And time will come. When you go in that process, time will come. Your lenses will be much more bigger. Time will come. You'll come to a point where in, it's not about me anymore. But it's the people around me. It's about God. Everybody knows I have a business, right? At first, I was just looking at myself. I'll be 
so to be honest, it just hurts, man. It was named after me. You know, I, 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 I couldn't say I'm, you know, I'm clean. You know, sometimes we have such motives in our lives wherein people cannot see. But you know what? As time goes by, I want the business to survive, not because of me, not because of my name, but because of the people that works under me. It's not about me. And that is my faith. And I cry out before God that may he honor that faith. This is not, this three things is not something that we can pick and choose. We can pick to be desperate, but we never be persistent. We can pick to be selfless, but not to be desperate. This is a process. If we truly have such faith in God, it needs to come to a point of desperation that we really need God. We need to come to a point that we are empty, we are broken. And as we are desperate, we need to persist, we need to push forward, no matter what will it look like. As you come to that point of persistence, you'll never realize you're actually living the extra baggages in your life to the point that you're becoming more selfless. And you can say, it's not about me anymore. It's about my daughter who is suffering. It's about my family. It's about the people that I'm looking at now, the church. It's about the community. We need to expand, and that is faith. Faith doesn't just, you know, doesn't need to be preserved. Faith actually should be shared and should flow out from the bellies of our body. That is faith. And what is faith? What is selfless? Luke 6, 35. Love your enemies. Do good to them and lend to them without expecting to get anything back. Mark 12, 31. The second is this. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than this. Philippians 2, 3. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourselves. 1 Corinthians 10, 24. No one should seek their own good but the good of others. John 3, 30. He must become greater. I must become less. I tell you, brothers and sisters, God wants to activate our faith. Not just faith, but relentless faith. A faith that is so desperate for God. A faith that will never stop, but will keep pushing forward. A faith that doesn't just look in the mirror and see yourself, but the faith wherein you began to go out from your own doorsteps and began to see what's going around you began to see other people, not just people, but you see souls for God. And this is a type of faith wherein I believe that the church is calling us. If we truly are, in, we truly are, and I believe indeed, that we wanted to trust God, the trust fall, we need to come to this point of having that relentless faith. Two minutes. <laughs> Have a faith in God. He never fails. Again, 
Have faith in God. Sorry, typographical error. Have faith in God. Not have a faith, sorry. Have faith in God and He never fails. He will never fail you. I just did remember Proverbs 3, 5, 6, Pastor, sorry. On the last part, right? Yeah. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean out on your own understanding. In all His ways, acknowledge Him and then He will make your path straight. Okay, I'll tell you a little bit about path straight. Does it mean that God will just make your path straight? Well, is there a perfect straight line? If you're an engineer or what? Nothing. What he's trying to say is that no matter how many obstacles in life that you have, he will make sure that your path will be straight by carrying you and he will be the one to walk with you that will make your path straight it's not you it's god you when you allow him to carry you then your path will be straight i have this song that i've asked the Cassandra and, and, and Jimbo. The title of the song is Trust in God. And as you sing this song, may it be a declaration of your faith in God. A declaration we're in that desperation, that persistency, and selflessness will be reignited in our hearts. Because in this time, that's what we need. And we need God. Because He never fails. Let's all stand up. Yeah. I know it's a new song. I think Don put the words if yep. you want them. Oops, sorry. This is 
trust in God, my Savior, the one who will never fail. Yes, Lord, you never fail, Lord. He will never fail. Come on, let's declare it. He never fails. I trust in God, my Savior, the one who will never This part, let's declare it over, you know, our our negativities. Let's declare it over our obstacles in life declare it over our pains our past because he does never fail he will answer when you ask so we'll do this a few times here I sought the Lord. I sought the Lord, and He heard, and He answered. I sought the Lord, and He heard, and He answered. I sought the Lord, and He heard, and He answered. That's why I trust Him. That's why I trust Him. I sought the Lord, and He heard, and He answered. I sought the Lord. And he heard, and he answered. I sought the Lord, and he heard, and he answered. That's why I trust him. Sing it again. Well, I sought the Lord, and he heard, and he answered. I sought the Lord, and he heard, and he answered. I sought the Lord, and he heard, and he answered. That's why I trust. One more time. That's why I trust him. I sought the Lord, and he heard, and he answered. I sought the Lord, and he heard, and he answered. I sought the Lord, and he heard, and he answered. That's why I trust him. That's why I trust in God, my Savior, the one who will never fail. I trust in God, my Savior, the one who will never fail. He will never fail. I sought, I sought the Lord, and He heard, and He answered. I sought the Lord, and He heard, and he answered, I sought the Lord, and he heard, and he answered, that's why I trust him. Declare this morning, I sought the Lord, he what? He heard, and he answered, I sought the Lord, and he heard, and he answered, I sought the Lord, and he heard, and he answered. That's why I, one more time, that's why I trust him. I sought the Lord, and he heard, and he answered. I sought the Lord, and he heard, and he answered. I sought the Lord, and he heard, and he answered. That's why I trust him. That's why I trust in God, my Savior, the one who will never. never fail. I trust in God, my Savior, the one who will never fail. He will never fail. I trust in God, my Savior.
He will never fail. Can we just lift up our hands? Can we just lift up our hands to the Lord? God, we want to thank you, God, for every time we seek you, you hear us. And you answer us, Lord. Sometimes you may answer us in a silent way. Sometimes you might answer us in a way where we cannot understand. But Lord, we know that you're there to answer our calling, to answer us, Lord. He never failed us, Lord. You have never failed us, oh God. You have never failed us, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, and as we lift up our hands, Father, Lord, let us continue to have that burning desire, Lord Jesus, to grow deeper into you, Lord God, to have that such desperation, Lord God, about you. Lord, help us, let the Holy Spirit help us to be persistent because we know who you are in our lives, Lord. And because we know that you love us, Lord God. And Lord, help us to be selfless, O oh Lord. Like what your son did on the cross. He died for us, Lord. You died for us, Lord Jesus. You're selfless, Lord Jesus. And that's why we want to be selfless, O oh Lord. Thank you, Jesus, O oh Lord. Just sing it again, the bridge part. I sought the Lord, and He heard, and He answered. I sought the Lord, and He heard, and He answered. I sought the Lord, and He heard, and He answered. That's why, That's why I trust, trust Him. You, God. That's why I trust Him. I, I sought, sought the Lord, Lord and He heard, and He answered. I sought the Lord. And he heard, and he answered. I sought the Lord, and he heard, and he answered. That's why I trust him. That's why I trust him. I sought the Lord, and he heard, and he answered. I sought the Lord, and he heard, and he answered. I sought the Lord, and he heard, and he answered. That's why I trust him. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, our faith is in you. Lord, and truly, you never failed us. Father, this is our prayer. We thank you, God, for your goodness in our lives, Lord. We give you praise, we give you honor. In the mighty name of Jesus, and let everybody say, Amen.